Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators. Uh, we're still here at Milford, Massachusetts, at the Milford Masonic Apartments. Uh, this is probably one of the locations we're going to come back and do more because not only do they have a lot of great Masonic stuff here, a lot of history, but uh, they have a ton of Royal Arch items and also a lot of commandery stuff. Uh, a lot. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the other hats that a Sir Knight uh, of a commandery of Knight Templar would wear. Now, for most of us who are Sir Knights or Masons or even members of the public who, that also watch these videos, um, you will recognize this hat. This is the hat that is used 99.9% .9 of the time by a Sir Knight here in the United States. Other jurisdictions, they wear other different hats uh, and regalia, but here in the United States, we wear the chapeau, and the chapeau is part of what is called the full Templar uniform. But we're not gonna talk about the chapeau today because that's the most common of all of the hat wear that is used. But today we're gonna to talk about fatigue caps, uh, skull caps, and the pillbox hat. Now the fatigue cap is probably the second most popular hat that a uh, Sir Knight would have had. And you're gonna find a lot of these today in some of these armories, in some of these buildings, and they're not really used anymore. This is an item that very few, I believe, here, at least in Massachusetts, uh, wear whatsoever uh, for any time period. Um, other jurisdictions may wear the fatigue cap from time to time for certain reasons. Now, there are two popular styles of the fatigue cap, though there were a number of different variations made. Uh, the two most popular styles was called the Parisian, um, that was more of a sort of a military style fatigue cap that had the angled sides to it. Uh, and then the bell style uh, hat, which you see here. Uh, this is the one that I find in a lot of commanderies here in Massachusetts. Uh, it has a leather visor that's been heavily either shellacked or uh, varnished. Um, and in this case, this belonged to a past eminent commander because you could tell of the gold strap. And though it's really, really light, uh, it does have the gold rays emitting from the Passion Cross. Now, where would a fatigue cap be worn? Well, according to the regulations of the Grand Encampment, there is regulations on the fatigue uniform, which includes the fatigue cap. But the fatigue cap would have been worn for a number of reasons by a Sir Knight. Um, if you do some research, you go into some of these buildings, uh, you look at photographs of some of the old, you know, Sir Knight commanderies. Uh, they may be in an outing or at the beach or the mountains. They may have a band with them. The ladies might be with them. Uh, if you really study some of these photographs, you may see some, Sir, some Sir Knights not in uniform. <clears throat> and when not in full Templar uniform, meaning they wouldn't have the chapeau, apron, if they wore one, baldric, sword, uh, but they may be in the commandery jacket, the black jacket, they will be also wearing the fatigue cap. Other instances, a Sir Knight might be present, but he's not in uniform at all. He may be just in a dark suit. Again, he would be wearing a fatigue cap. Um, the fatigue cap was basically worn by a Sir Knight who wasn't in full Templar uniform. Now, again, jurisdictions differ from jurisdictions. Commanderies differ from commanderies. Everybody did certain things their own way. Uh, sometimes it was with the regulations of the Grand Encampment and Grand Commanderies of each jurisdiction, and sometimes it wasn't. Um, some Sir Knights that might be at a meeting, uh, which we call orders, otherwise many of you may know as Masonic degrees, in commands we call them orders. They may be in the large room 
which in the commandery we call it the asylum. Um, if they are not in uniform, they would probably be wearing a fatigue cap. But in most cases, a Templar would be in full Templar uniform. Other instances, again, tradition. Not all commanders do this, and I'm not saying that all commanders or even a few, but there might be one or two that might have done this. Um, during the orders, a Templar uniform at one time may have differed from order to order. So if they're doing the illustrious order of the Red Cross, their uniform might slightly differ from doing an order of the Malta or order of the Temple. Um, they may have, during the illustrious order of the Red Cross or even the order of Malta, worn a fatigue cap instead of the chapeau, which would have been worn only during the order of the Temple when a Sir Knight is in full uniform. Again, that's up to tradition, and not all commanders did that. So don't take my word that we wore them all the time uh, during degree work. We didn't. The other two hats, one's called a skull cap. I love this name. Skull cap. And the other one <clears throat> is called the pillbox hat. Now, these hats along with the fatigue cap, were worn by the Sir Knights for various reasons. Along with the fatigue cap, there was also another cap that I have seen from time to time, and they came in three variations. Um, I believe it was the Pittsburgh, the Boston, and the Louisville cap. Uh, they were called a traveling cap. And basically, they were similar, similar to the skull cap where it wasn't as rigid or sturdy. Uh, they could actually be like this, all folded up. You could put it in your jacket pocket, you could throw it in your suitcase, you could stick it in your back pocket, wherever. And they were used by, uh, as traveling. So if a certain night, maybe on a train, or at an outside meeting, or picnic or something, um, <clears throat> he might just have his jacket on, um, instead of throwing on the chapeau, which he shouldn't be wearing, uh, he could pull out his little traveling uh, fatigue cap and put his fatigue, uh, traveling fatigue cap on. I believe the pill and the skull caps were worn for the same purposes or maybe even for other reasons. Um, the skull cap, again, is more of a traveling cap. Again, it could all be folded right up within itself just like that. You can actually then fold it up again and look at that. Or the pillbox. The pillbox is a little bit more sturdier. Now with the fatigue caps, interesting note that on some of them, not all of them, you may find a piece of material that is stitched to the inside like this. Or in some cases a piece of material with a brass ring. And on a Sir Knight's uh, belt, not all of them, but on some, you may find an extra sling holder on the belt. Now, for those who don't know what a sling is, it's the chain that holds the sword. So we'll call it a chain holder, okay? Uh, on the extra chain holder would be a hook, and that would be in the back of the belt, in his back, and so Sir Knight could carry his fatigue cap around by just hooking it on the hook on his belt, like that. You don't find too many of those hooks and sling holders on belts today. So the skull cap is more of a pillbox, but traveling. And the pillbox is a little bit more sturdier. I haven't found one that would hang off anybody. And I'm not exactly sure where these were used. In other jurisdictions, they do, like Canada or the UK, do wear the pillbox. Whether we still do in some commanderies in the US, I do not know. Uh, and exactly where they were used, again, I do not know, but I think maybe on the same reason where the fatigue cap might have come into use. Also in asylums if a certain knight is not in full uniform. But, 
I recently picked up the great book called Fraternal Regalia I, Knights Templar by Michael McDonald, and I believe this was done in the 2000s. Uh, I'm not too sure, but in the book, and I'll have a photograph that goes along with it if Michael McDonald doesn't mind me copying his picture, uh, and I'll have to find out where this actually came from, but he shows a Sir Knight and a group of Sir Knights wearing the pillbox, and it's not regulation usage. This is actually a past commander who is wearing the pillbox, who is actually, I believe, in charge of the mounted patrol or mounted troop or mounted commandery of that commandery. Commanderies had mounted commanderies, they rode horses. And as such, some commanderies had some unusual pieces to go with those mounted uh, patrols or mounted troops. They wore the pillbox instead of the chapeau. There were other groups called uh, drill teams. <clears throat> Their specific duty was to do specific maneuvers uh, for meetings, for annual conclaves, for general public, parades, and triannual conclaves. And usually they were a separate group of Sir Knights in the commandery. They weren't usually members, or I should say officers, but a separate group. And they did specific tactical maneuvers. And they were called drill teams. In many instances, their uniforms completely were different than a regular Sir Knight of that same commandery. And you see here another commandery. And again, I'll have a picture of it. They're actually wearing the fatigue cap, but it's white. So fatigue caps were used for different purposes with different groups. The same with the pillbox. Uh, again, you have to do some research uh, to find out where all these different items were used by. Uh, this is an excellent, excellent uh, resource book in which we're going to talk about resource uh, or reference books later. But uh, Fraternal Regalia by Knights, uh, but for the Knights Temple by Michael Donald. Um, it's got a lot of great pictures in there, information, uh, and it does talk about all the different, in, in, um, different uh, variations of swords and capes and hats and aprons uh, that a commandery wore. So with that, we thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to give us the thumbs up if you like what you see. Uh, leave us a comment. Maybe you have an unusual commandery hat that's in your armory that you would like to share with us. Please do so. Uh, follow us on Facebook. And with that, thank you very much. Skullcap.